This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Okay, good morning everyone. Who's having a good time so far? Not bad, not bad. Okay, so let's start with the beginning. As we mentioned in one of the shuls, the Greek Empire, as an empire, really began with Alexander the Great 1,000 years after we left Mitzrayim. There is a famous account of Alexander's conquest of Israel and Jerusalem recorded in the Gemara in Yuma and Daf Samach Tes. I'm sure you're all familiar with the Gemara. The Gemara says that when Alexander entered the gates of Yushalayim and he invaded Eretz Yisrael, he is welcomed by... Shemunat Sadik appears before him and the Gemara says that when Alexander saw the face of Shemunat Sadik, he fell to the ground, he bowed down and he said, this very face always appears to me in battle and brings me victory. Ad Kan L'Shoin HaGemara. All the Gemara tells us is Shemunat Sadik, who by the way was Shemunat Sadik Haya Mishiyare Knesset Hagdala, which means he's from the very last members of the Anche Knesset Hagdala. Now this is very important to know. Because we mentioned Alexander rises to power 1,000 years after we left Mitzrayim at the very same time that Malachi passes away, that Nehemiah passes away, that Chagai and Zechariah pass away. Meaning, at, upon the cessation of Nevoah, that is when Alexander the Great rises in power. When Alexander rises, Nevoah ceases. When Alexander rises, Avodah ceases. This is a very important historic piece of information. In fact, we're going to see based on Seder Oilam that from the rise of Alexander the Great there's something called Minyan Shtarais. That Shtarais are now documented and dated based on the rise of Alexander, which is really the cessation of prophecy, which is really the cessation of Avodah Zara. In any event, that's all the Gemara tells us. The Gemara says Alexander sees Shimon HaTzadik, but in Josephus, Josephus adds a very interesting piece of information. And the reason the Gemara doesn't record this, it's not that the Gemara is contradicting this, it's just not relevant for the Gemara. But every Jew must be aware of what Josephus writes about the encounter of Alexander the Great and Shimon Tzadik. Namely, Shimon Tzadik brings Alexander to the base Hamikdash. And when he brought him into the Beis Hamikdash, he showed him something. He showed him... Now, by the way, Josephus writes, and the Gemara also says that he's dressed in the Shemayin Begadim, he's dressed in the garments of the Kohen Gadol, and he brought him to the Beis Hamikdash, and they showed him Sefer Daniyam. And what does it say in Sefer Daniyam? In a few places in Sefer Daniel, it predicts, it prophecies the sudden rise to power of Alexander the Great and his defeat of King Darius, the king of Persia. If you remember, the Gemara Navoy de Zara says that Alexander rises to power 34 years after the second base of Mikdash was built. That's Navoy de Zara Daftas. There are two or three references to Alexander the Great in Sefer Daniel. The first one is in Perak Zayin Pasak Pasak Vav. Does anybody remember what animal in the vision of Daniel represented Greece? So the first nation, Babel, is compared to a lion. Very good. I'm happy we have yeshiva educated people who learned in yeshiva for many years but don't know anything about Sefer Daniel. Okay, so, what does it say in Sefer, by the way, yeah, okay, I won't say anything. Now, um, in Perak Zion, in Sefer Daniel, the Bavel is compared to the lion, Paras is compared to the? Bear. Bear. And Greece is compared to the? Leopard, Namer. Now, just to, to defend us, B'nai Yeshiva, that we don't learn Navi, first of all, Yeshivas are non-for-profit organizations, so, you know, they don't really... Um, and besides that, besides that, you know, Alpi Kabbalah, the Bala Leshem, says that Dikduk and the Psukim are more like the outer shell of the Torah instead of the inner core. 
So therefore, there's some danger that if you put too much emphasis on that, you could be led uh, astray if you don't have grounding in the core, which is a Tarsh of Alpeh. But even so, Kol Tamer Chacham Tzarech Leida Kol Chaft Alitzram. In any event, Daniel sees the vision of the leopard. Basar Dina Chazes Haves Va'aru Achori Kinomer. Now this leopard had how many wings? Who remembers? Four wings. Why four wings? Now Alexander died prematurely. How old? He rises to power at 20 years old and he passes away at 32. He was likely poisoned, but he passes away at 32. He has, this leopard has four wings. Ultimately, Alexander's power is divided among four generals. Talmai took Egypt. Seleucus took the Assyria and Babylon. Antignos took Persia and Asia Minor. Philip, Alexander's brother, took Macedonia. And the Pasuk says that this leopard had four wings and it was these were like wings of a bird and the wild leopard had four heads. Vishultin Yehevle, dominion was given to him, meaning only Alexander had dominion. After Alexander there was no central heir that inherited the sovereignty of Alexander. Instead, it was divided among four different powers. Now, in Parak Ches, does anybody know, later on in Sefer Daniel, when Daniel sees the vision of Greece, it's no longer compared to a leopard. What is it compared to? It's called Va'ani ho'yisi meven v'hinei tzfir ho'yizim. Tzfir ho'yizim was a he-goat. Why was Greece compared to a he, a he goat? Because it's showing that Greece was largely domesticated, meaning, for the most part, Greece did not persecute the Jewish people. It's one of the only exiles that, with the exception of Antiochus, there was no religious persecution. So it's compared to a goat as opposed to a wild animal. And interestingly, this goat comes from the west, Al Pnei Kalaretz, across the surface of the whole earth. It doesn't even touch the ground. It looks like it's skipping and jumping. And that reflects Alexander's astounding speed with which he conquered pretty much the whole world. In fact, when the Gemara Megillah says, Arba Malach Bekipa, right? Four kings rule over the whole, the whole world. And the Gemara does not list Alexander. And Toysus asks, what about Alexander? What does Toysus answer? We're only talking about the kings that are mentioned in Tanakh. So even though Alexander is referenced and alluded to in Tanakh, but he's not explicitly mentioned, but he also ruled over the majority of the known world. He conquered Asia Minor, the Middle East, Egypt, Persia, and he even penetrated India. Okay, and on the head of this horn, Karan Chazos was a conspicuous horn that represents strength, Bain Einav between his eyes, says the Abarbanel. Excuse me, says the Malbum. Why does, why is Greece reflected as between his eyes? Because Alexander was not only very powerful, but he was also a philosopher and very wise. Chacham Einav Bereishai. The fact that it was with conspicuous eyes reflected his wisdom. And the pasuk goes on to say, Vayovay Ad Ha'ayl. He comes to the ram. The ram reflects Persia, Darius, and Alexander did not await provocation from Darius. He crossed the Dardanelles. He penetrated Asia Minor into Darius's territory. And in his initial engagement with Darius, he won a decisive victory. And he's fighting bitterly against Darius. Darius attempts to appease Alexander. But Alexander refuses, and he pushes him back, and he destroys him. The isle had no strength to stand before him. And this he-goat, which reflects Alexander the Great, Higdil Admaoid, was very strong. But Ukeatzmai, in the pinnacle of the power of Greece, of Alexander, Nishbara HaKeren Agdola, the horn broke. In other words, when Alexander reached the summit of power at 32 years old, suddenly he dies. There is no question that when Josephus says that Shimonat Sadik showed 
Alexander Sefer Daniel, he was showing him these Psukim and Parakhas about the prophecy of the sudden rise to power of Alexander the Great. Now, there is a, another uh, Pasuk later on in Parakhas Pasuk Chaf Aleph that Vahat Safir Hasair, this he goat, Melech Yavan, refers to the king of Greece. Furthermore, in Parak Yud Aleph, Pasuk Gimel, the Ahmad Melech Gibar, a mighty king will arise, Umashal Mim Rav, he will rule with great dominion, the Asakir Sinai, he will do as he pleases. So it's important to know that even though the Gemara just tells us about the encounter of Shimon Tzaddik and Alexander the Great, but according to Josephus, and this was not relevant for the Gemara to report, they brought him into the Beis HaMikdash, they showed him Sefer Daniel, they showed him how his sudden rise to power was predicted in numerous places in Sefer Daniel. So that's really an astounding context to understand that Alexander the Great saw Sefer Daniel predicting his rise to power before it even happened. And that's really the basis of uh, the Greek Empire. And from there, as they say, the rest is history. Okay. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.